Hello everyone, uh, this is Data Pioneer with the Linux Unix Tech Channel and uh, thank you for joining me today. Uh, I'm going to uh, introduce to you a, an application today that I think once you see it you'll really like it. I'm back out on my uh, Fedora 31 workstation. I got a different background than I had before uh, but it is my Fedora 31 workstation and I'm going to introduce you to a product called Cockpit. Now Cockpit is a web-based uh, Linux server administration application. Uh, it allows you to uh, administer things such as storage, networking, uh, and a host of other things. Uh, typical things that you would like to be able to do out on the desktop uh, in the workstation for instance, uh, but perhaps uh, you're not as familiar with the uh, command line as some folks are and uh, you're reluctant to do that. What Cockpit does is it brings all of that to the uh, web-based application uh, on the web browser uh, and makes it easy for you to do it. And uh, let me take you out to the website here, uh, go out to the site called cockpitproject.org, and here it is. And here are the instructions basically for installing uh, Cockpit in uh, the web browser, I mean in the Fedora 321 uh, workstation so that it's accessible via the web browser. Uh, and I'll get into uh, the installation and show you how to do that. And I'll put a link to this under the video as well so you'll have it so you can get back out. And so when you fire up your Fedora 31 workstation, you'll be able to install it just like I'm going to be demonstrating to you today. Um, Cockpit is an application that is installed by default in Fedora Server. However, if you want it in the workstation, you're going to have to install it, and we'll do that. And so if you would, come on and join me, and we'll get started with installing Cockpit Linux Server Administrator web-based application for Fedora 31 workstation. Let's get into it. Okay, I'm back out on the uh, Fedora 31 workstation. Uh, I'm on the website here, and... Um, here are the instructions for installing Cockpit. Now I've got the terminal up as well. We'll get to that terminal in just a moment. But um, there are three stages here that you have to, to take in order to install Cockpit uh, on Fedora 31 workstation. Uh, the first is to install it. The second is to enable it. And the third is to open the firewall um, as necessary in order to, uh, to make uh, cockpit uh, work properly okay uh, through the firewall um, I am going to go back out to my uh, terminal here and uh, bring it up and here's the terminal that I'm, I'm in right now the first thing I need to do is install the, uh, the first instruction so let's go back out again uh, to the website and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy and paste uh, these instructions into the terminal make it easy and so to install cockpit we just do a sudo dnf install cockpit so let me copy that and go back out to the terminal and I'll bring that up and let me just right click and paste that in the terminal and hit the enter key it's asking me for my password and go ahead and enter that and let it go ahead and install cockpit said I think you really like cockpit once we get it installed and get it up so you can take a look at it um, since it is web-based all right so here it is 16 packages that need to be installed let me go ahead and say yes to this and hit enter Cockpit is for RPM-based distributions, of which Fedora is one, uh, based on Red Hat. Um, and um, I like it. I'm using it on my laptop, um, administering the system there on the workstation, on the laptop, and uh, I really like what it can do for me. Um, and I'm also running it on Fedora uh, 31 server. Uh, which I'll do a, a video later on. Okay, so now I'm completed with that. Let me go back to the browser. Let's look at enabling Cockpit. Now that we have it installed, 
let's uh, run the second command, which is this one right here. All right, and so I'll do a copy here, and this enables cockpit. It's a sudo system CTL enable now cockpit.socket. Okay, and so let me go back out to the web browser and um, bring that back up again. Let's clear the screen and let me right click and paste that command into the terminal. Hit enter and it creates a symlink out to Etsy systemd system sockets dot target dot wants forward slash cockpit dot socket okay and it creates that sim link out to user lib system d system cockpit dot socket all right now that we have that let's go back out to the web browser and now that we have the uh, cockpit enabled and installed and enabled let's go ahead and open the firewall and so let me run this command here we may not have to run both but I'm going to run both if it will let me. Um, so let's click on the browser again. I mean, not the browser, but the terminal again. And let's paste that command into the terminal. Enter. All right, that was successful. And so let's go back out to the browser one more time. And let's run that second command, which adds the service, making it permanent so that when you uh, reboot the system it will come up uh, each time uh, in the firewall through the firewall all right so let's uh, copy that command let's go back out to the terminal and uh, let's fire up that third command here paste that and uh, hit enter and it's successful okay so we have all of the elements for cockpit uh, to be successful installed We've installed Cockpit, we've enabled it, and now we've opened the firewall to allow it to run. It is a web-based application, and so we will need to go out on the web. Let me exit the terminal here, and let me get back out to the, to the uh, Firefox web browser. To access the web-based application uh, for the Linux administration side, you want to, and my uh, local host is what I have as the local domain right now, and so to do that, you just type in localhost and port 9090, 9090. Okay, so that should bring it up. And uh, the first time you run it, it comes up to this. And so we'll need to log in uh, to the workstation itself. All right, and so let me put in my account. The nice thing about Fedora um, Cockpit is that it uses the username and password credentials for your local account. And so let me put in Data Pioneer and the password that I'm using. I'm going to select Reuse my password for privileged tasks and I'm going to click Login. And this is localhost.local domain. All right, so here we are. Here is the Fedora Workstation edition of uh, Cockpit. All right. And what we're looking at here is information about the hardware, the asset tag, the machine ID. It's populating some information out here on the uh, metrics. Okay, the uh, there's only one CPU core here in the system because uh, it is a virtual machine. I didn't give it more than one core. Uh, we've got looking at memory and swap metrics here. We've got disk I/O metrics, network traffic metrics as well. Um, you can show the fingerprints if you're using secure shell keys. I am not. And uh, here's the host name. I'm going to go ahead and change it. So I'm going to click on it and I'm going to uh, select the real host name. I'm going to change that in the system. And I'm going to call this Fedora 31. Uh, let's see here. Fedora 31. Um, hmm. Okay and ws.landlocal.com. Okay, I'm just going to call landlocal.com as my domain. Fedora 31 WS for workstation. I'm going to go ahead and change that in the system. And uh, you can see that got changed right there, which means that on my Vim, uh, VM, this has changed the local host name here. So let me go ahead and click it again. 
And so let me do a pretty host name here, uh, Fedora 31 Workstation. All right, oops, I can spell. There we go. Let's go ahead and change that. And so this gets now changed to the Fedora 31 Workstation. All right. You can join the domain if you're on an Active Directory domain services domain uh, or forest. System time here is uh, 2019, 11:14 at 10:45 Eastern Time. Um, you can restart the system if you'd like uh, or shut it down either way from here. And then you can enable stored metrics as well if you want to do that. I'm not going to do that right now. All right, so we're out on the Fedora Workstation Edition uh, cockpit, and we're on the host, and we're looking at the system here, okay? Uh, if you want to look at logs, you can click on logs and take a look at that. You can look at the severity. I have it set for error and above. You can change it for only emergency, for everything, for alert and above. For critical and above, for error and above, which is what I have it set for now. Warning and above, notice and above, info and above, and debug. I'm just going to leave it on error and above right now. And so anytime there's an error or anything or above, it's going to uh, alert me for all services right now. And if I wanted to choose a particular service like kernel, I can do a kernel. So any kernel error and above messages will get issued to me on the desktop otherwise uh, nothing else okay let's look at storage and for storage you can uh, monitor uh, various aspects of the system uh, here the reading and writing here for storage is being uh, graphically presented for you uh, file systems are also indicated here for dev fedora localhost live root um, okay which is a 44.1 gigabyte the mount point is the root of the file system. Here is the mount point for boot, which is dev SDA1. You've got my click free system, which is the one terabyte um, storage device. Uh, got NAS and Fedora Workstation Live here. Here, the writing is being shown here graphically. Here are the storage logs that you can click on. Uh, if you want to add RAID devices, you can click here and add those. We don't have any devices or disks set up, so I can't do that. For volume groups, you can do the same, and for iSCSI targets as well. Here are all the drives that are being shown in the system right now. All right, let's go out on networking and, um, and take a look at that. Uh, for networking, you've got the send-receive traffic that's being uh, shown here graphically. You've, I've got zero active zones in the firewall. I've got it turned on. Um, for interfaces, I have the ENP0S3, which is the 192.168.1.111.23. Uh, All right, and then I've got the VIRBR0 for the bridge, which is the uh, virtual bridge for VirtualBox, and it's set at 192.168.122.124, okay, with no carrier. Um, the unmanaged interfaces is the VIRBR0, NIC, okay, and then here are the network logs that are being presented. Let's go out on the accounts, and you can see from the accounts aspect here that I have two accounts set up in the system. One for root and one for myself, which is Data Pioneer, as a privileged user. For services, um, I've got the system services that are currently being run. It, it displays whether uh, it's enabled, disabled, uh, or static. Okay, um, and all of these are presented for you here, and you can obviously make changes to those at will. For applications. Um, I can pull up the applications that are currently running in Fedora 31 Workstation. Uh, Cockpit Podman uh, component can be installed. It's not currently installed. The diagnostic reporting can be installed as well. The 389 directory server. The only thing that I have installed right now is storage management. So let's go ahead and install the diagnostic reporting. So I'm going to go ahead and click install and let it go ahead and install the diagnostic reporting aspect here 
I really like uh, Cockpit because from this web-based interface, it, it's really professional looking, very clean. Um, I like it, okay? Now, when I installed Diagnostic Reports, notice Diagnostic Reports popped up, all right? So if I click on that, I can create a report. I'm not going to do that right now because it does take some time to do that. And for purposes of this demonstration, I will tell you that all you need to do is click the Create Report. Uh, you might want to go grab a cup of tea or a cup of coffee. It does take about five minutes or so to create that initial report. I have done this on my laptop. It does work. Uh, and what it presents to you is a great little uh, report, uh, which is HTML-based. It allows you to click on various things and get um, a report of the diagnostic status of your system, which is very good. All right, for software updates, and this is the part that might be very useful to most of you guys uh, so that you don't have to run updates uh, through the terminal. Uh, you can do it right through here. And so let me go ahead and turn that on for automatic updating. And so you don't even have to mess with it. Um, it will automatically update for you. And uh, I'll show you how to, uh, to do that here in a moment. Uh, it is checking for installed software right now and getting a full listing of that. And then it will set that up uh, automatically for you, and you can set that up uh, to your liking. Uh, you can tell it when you want it to update it automatically, just like you do in Windows, if you use Windows at all. And so um, just be patient here as it checks everything. I'm going to go ahead and install that application. Okay, so it's installing the DNF automatic right now. And when it finishes, it will present a screen to you that will let you tweak your automatic update capability here within the Fedora Workstation Edition. So uh, we're going to give it a few seconds here to uh, do that installation for us. Uh, and it should turn that on for us automatically. It does. And uh, when it uh, comes up, it should present that screen that I was telling you about. Um, and so let me go ahead and I don't see it coming up yet, but you can do an install security updates or all updates. Here it is. Okay, so you can apply all updates or you can do apply security updates only. So let's say, for instance, if you wanted to apply security updates only and only worried about doing automatic updating for that purpose, then you can change it. You can do it every day. You can do it on a day of the week, Mondays, Tuesdays, Wednesdays, Thursdays. Friday, Saturday, or Sunday. Um, you can tell it when you want to do it. You don't want to do it at 6 a.m. You want to do it at 3 a.m. Okay, or 11 p.m. 11 a.m. Uh, 5 o'clock in the afternoon. Whatever you want to do, you can set it for 3 a.m. That way, I'm not uh, on the workstation uh, necessarily uh, during that time. I'm in bed, and so it will automatically check for updates for security updates only. And then it will restart the machine automatically. So my virtual machine here on the Windows 10 Pro main PC will automatically restart for me uh, when it applies those security updates. All right. If you want to manually install all the updates, you can click here. Or if you want to manually install only the security updates, you can do that here as well. And then you can check for updates. The last time it was checked was 30 minutes ago, so I don't think there are any available for us. And last but not least here in the terminal, if I click terminal, it brings up the terminal interface for the system. I want to click away from black and go to dark and to get a dark look, which is something I like. It, it kind of reminds me uh, of the, uh, the look and feel of the Windows 10 again here. All right. And uh, for PowerShell, it kind of looks, reminds me of a PowerShell. So if I want to do a uname, uh, R, I can do a U name R. I can see the current version of the uh, kernel that we have here in Windows or uh, Fedora 31 workstation, which is 5.3.8-300. Okay. Uh, if I do a DFH, I can get a human readable uh, layout of the disk of file system of how the uh, system is laid out itself in Fedora 31 workstation. Let's look at the free memory that we have running right now. 
and this is better than HTOP because it doesn't uh, include the buffers here in the memory allocation and usage. So we're using uh, 1,744,696 bytes, about 1.74 uh, gigs here of a total of 4 gigs in the system. We've got uh, 982,592 bytes free of memory. We're not using any swap right now, so we've got the full amount of swap available. All right, so let me go ahead and exit here and get out. Uh, I am disconnected, and uh, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, go out to the dashboard here in the Fedora Workstation Edition. Here is the dashboard. We're looking at CPU now. Okay, it's coming up uh, for metrics. We can look at memory and then network and disk I.O. for these and these things that you can see uh, right away. Okay, if I click here, it goes back out to my uh, host again for the system. And you can see we've got metrics running as well. All right, and so it says that I am a privileged user, and yes, I am a privileged user in this system. And so this has been uh, a quick look at Fedora 31 Workstation Cockpit, a web-based Linux system administration tool that you can use in Fedora 31 Workstation. I'm going to go ahead and log out of Cockpit. Go ahead and click that and log out. And uh, hope you enjoyed it. And go ahead and install Fedora 31 Workstation if you haven't already done so. Go ahead and install uh, the Fedora 31 Workstation Cockpit. For the, works, for the workstation, uh, as I said, for the server, it's automatically installed and use it. I think you'll like it. If you like this video, if it was helpful, go ahead and subscribe to my video. If you like this video, go ahead and hit the up, thumb up. And uh, if you do subscribe, go ahead and hit that bell. So every time you subscribe, uh, or every time you uh, I upload a video, rather, after you subscribe, uh, you will uh, receive my latest video.